Hello and welcome back to chapter 25. This is the last chapter in section 5, which is finance. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to talk about uh, accounts and uh, analysis of accounts. This chapter is linked with the chapter 23 and 24. So we already talked about financial statements, uh, income statement and balance sheet. Now it's time to analyze them uh, because uh, simply documents alone mean nothing without analysis and comparison. Uh, so we're going to see how to interpret financial statements, uh, how to interpret the liquidity of the business, why it's important. And we're going to talk about why and how the accounts are used. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to explain many uh, things related to different users of these accounts. So simply the information in balance sheet and income statement will be used by business stakeholders. And already we said that Business stakeholders are many, uh, governments, uh, owners, managers, workers, all these are interested in the business accounts. And of course, uh, they want to know details about it. So the figures usually that we have in these statements will be compared from year to another in order to provide these stakeholders with suitable information. Remember that information alone and in one year means nothing if I don't compare. So I want to always see if, I, if my performance is doing well. I want to see if my uh, business is uh, better uh, this year than last year, or I am simply better than other competitors. So because uh, I, I need to identify my weaknesses, my strength. So I need to know what should I do. Should, shall I close uh, a factory? Shall I stop producing a product? Shall I locate here, not there? and many more questions, of course, they need uh, accounts analysis. So to see if the business is meeting the objectives to improve the future performance of the business, this is a must. I need to check my performance regularly, of course. So what stakeholders want to know, they, they have many questions depending on stakeholders. Owners and shareholders want to know the, about the profit, about the, uh, the uh, ability or if they are willing, let's say, to, to invest more in the business. Uh, want to know if the business exists or will continue in the future. Will the future profits rise or fall? Uh, is the business going to pay its debts? Is the business able to pay uh, the borrowings? For workers, for example, they want to know if the business is able to increase their payment. And of course, many more questions. All that will be answered when we use financial statements. So when I talk about business performance, simply I, I have two uh, parts. I want to see the profitability of the business, which is, of course, an important indicator that will tell me how the business is performing. And there is another one, which is liquidity. And also it's important to talk about the business performance and it's related to money. So here I have two things to measure the business performance. And how can I do this? Simply by using ratios. Ratios will give me numbers and these numbers will indicate something, of course. And, and uh, simply the business will use the income statement and balance sheet and will start using these rules just to assess the performance of the business. And remember, I should use these to compare to other businesses or to compare the business to previous years to see what's going on, why we are doing well, why we uh, have problems this year, and many more uh, uh, questions, of course, that requires uh, answers. So let's start with the first part, profitability ratios. We have three ratios in profitability. Uh, the first one, gross profit margin. The second one, profit margin. And thir the third one is return on capital employed. I have an example here, uh, which is uh, tank toys. And uh, simply you can uh, see the examples in the book and uh, I'll, I'll talk about them. Uh, so uh, here the first one is gross profit margin. Simply gross profit margin, it shows the gross profit as a percentage of sales. If you remember the sequence that we uh, had in income statement, we said sales revenue minus cost of goods sold equal gross profit. So here I'm asking, what is the percentage of gross profit out of sales? So let's say if the, if the, if the answer here for year 2013, for example, is 20%, that simply means out of my sales for every dollar sold, I have 20 cents as gross profit margin. So if the answer is 30%, that means there is an improvement this year in the gross profit margin. 
So gross profit margin measures the percentage of gross profit out of my sales. So if they ask you how to improve it, we know already how to improve gross profit. We know that we can increase revenue and we know that we can reduce cost of sales and in this way the gross profit will be improved and of course gross profit margin as well. This is the first ratio. And the second one is called the profit margin. And here it's somehow accurate because I am deducting expenses from gross profit to calculate profit. So here I'm, I'm asking this question, what is the percentage of profit out of revenue? So here, I, if the answer is 10%, that means for every dollar sold, the business is making 10 cents as a net profit. So this is the meaning of the answer. Remember, it's a profit out of sales revenue times 100. So already we know also how to improve it. If the business has a good control over its expenses and it improved its gross profit, then simply the business will be able to uh, increase its profit margin. The third one, which is important to shareholders, uh, which is return on capital employed. We already talked about capital employed. Remember that is the permanent capital and the, any money that the business takes from the bank. This is the capital employed of the business. So on the balance sheet, the capital employed will be the total of shareholder funds plus long-term liability. So it's simply measuring the percentage of profit out of capital employed. So I'm asking, what is the percentage of profit how much did the business uh, make as profit out of capital invested? So if we invested $1,000, what is the profit that we made on this $1,000? Here, if the percentage increased, that means simply the business is efficient. That means the managers are efficient. They are using this capital invested in an efficient way and they are making profit out of it. So remember, but here I'm talking about efficiency. Return on capital employed will tell me how efficient the manager are. The more successful the managers are in earning profit from capital used in the business. Of course, if the, if, if the result is high. Then, liquidity ratios. So we talked about profitability ratios and we talked about profit. Here we are measuring now the liquidity of the business. Remember, the liquidity is the ability of the business to pay its short-term debts. So, of course, I should know if the business is able to pay its short-term debts or not. Then this is important because I have to know, is the business liquid? Can they pay their liabilities? Can they pay their debts? So, it's important to assess the business liquidity. And here we have two ratios. The first one is called current ratio, and the second one is called asset test ratio. And also the same example about tank toys. So the first one, which is current ratio, it's simply current asset over current liabilities. So it measures current asset to current liabilities. Or in other words, I'm, I'm asking myself, can the current assets of the business cover current liabilities? And here, a hint, don't mix this with working capital, which was current asset minus current liabilities. Here we are saying uh, current asset over current liabilities. It's a ratio. So if the answer, let's say, is 1.25. The answer is 1.25. 1, 1 we say, okay, the business could only just pay off all of its short-term debts from current assets. But to be on the safe side, to be really safe, it's better if it's 1.5 up to 2. Because if it's less than 1, simply that current assets won't be able to cover current liabilities and the business has a real cash flow problems. However, if it's 1.5, we can say the business can pay its current liabilities and we are safe. So remember this because it's important. And someone will say, okay, what if it's more than two? More than two also, it's not perfect for the business. Why? Because simply you are holding a lot of money that uh, uh, the business could use in other purposes. For example, current assets are like cash, trade receivables, and inventories, right? So here, if I say that its current assets are way more than current liabilities, that means the business has a lot of cash. It's not using them in paying uh, debts, or the business simply has a lot of uh, inventories, or the business simply is, uh, uh, or has a lot of trade receivables so that customers are not paying on time. So this is not safe to be a very high ratio. That's why we say 1.5 to 2 is acceptable. Then we come to asset test ratio. We ask the same question, but like this. We ask, can the business pay its 
current liabilities out of most liquid assets. And here when I say most liquid assets, I exclude inventories. Because if I look at the three assets, cash, trade receivables, and inventories, the most liquid will be cash, which is already liquid. And of course, trade receivables, the money with debtors. However, inventories will be the, the last thing. So I ask myself, can I do this? If the answer is one, then yes, the business uh, simply could pay off its short term. That's from its most liquid assets. Usually it's acceptable to be one. It's satisfactory to be one because the business can do this without selling inventory. Of course, less than one, the answer will be no. The business cannot pay its short term. That's out of its most liquid assets. So this will give me somehow an accurate figure. Users and users of the accounts in your book, page 308, 309, I'll just uh, explain them now and uh, uh, let you see the table in the book. Okay, so uh, this, this is the book and uh, these are the uh, examples about ratio analysis. Uh, I want just to give you uh, uh, one hint. You have to know how to comment on the result because in the exam they will ask you to compare, especially paper two, they ask you to compare the business performance in two different years. So simply just understand the uh, result. So here, for example, uh, as we said, return on capital employed 26.3%. If it increased, that means the managers are successful in earning more profit out of capital. That means they are efficient. So I have to understand these comments. Gross profit margin, if also it increased, that means the business is making, for every dollar sold, more gross profit. And that means the business has a control over the cost of goods sold and uh, more sales revenue. Net profit margin, if it increased, that means the business has good control over the expenses and the business is able to improve also gross profit. See, all these comments are important to understand because they will ask you about them in the exam. Also on liquidity ratios, I have to understand if it's 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.5. What do we mean by this? So 1.25, as we said here, Yes, the business could only pay off all of short-term debts, but I know that the safe one will be between 1.5 and 2. And I know that an asset test ratio, which is uh, pay, uh, uh, covering current liabilities uh, with the most liquid assets, if it's 0 0.75 like this example here, simply the business is not able to pay its short-term debts out of most liquid assets. So it should be 1 and above. Okay, with respect to the last point, the users, there is a table here. Uh, I, I want to summarize uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, direct and uh, simple. Uh, the users are many, of course, the managers. The managers are uh, the users of the accounts of the business. They use financial information for several reasons. So mainly you will see here in the book that they will use it for keeping control over the performance of each product or division. They take many decisions to stop producing, expanding the business, changing prices, and many more decisions. Shareholders, of course, or potential investors, they want to know if the business is making profit, if the business is able to pay its short term. That's creditors, the people who give us goods on credit, they want to know if we are able to pay them back. The banks, one of the things that is very important for them and it's included in our business plan and they want to see if we have a good financial position and also we have enough profit or we are able to pay back the loan. The government cares about taxes. The workers also care about the, the accounts of the business because they want to see if the company is secure. Is the business going to pay us more? Is the, going, is the business going to give us uh, more salaries? So it's important, of course. And other businesses want to compare their performance to our performance. Remember the limitations, ratio analysis is good. We can compare our performance to others and we can assess our performance in terms of liquidity and profitability. But uh, still we have some disadvantages. The main one is that we are looking at the past information. So now we are in 2019, for example, I, I, I do the accounting information and analysis of 2018. So I'm not looking uh, forward, I'm just simply uh, looking uh, on uh, past accounting information. So some information here, like accounting information might be affected by inflation, different companies use different accounting methods, but still, of course, ratio analysis 
with the five uh, ratios that uh, we explained, uh, of course, will will give you an idea about profitability and liquidity of the business. They are many, by the way, but in your uh, GCS, you are only responsible for uh, these five. Okay, so we're done with the section five. Uh, always remember to study them as one package, especially 23, 24, 25. You can apply, you can use your book. Uh, I hope I made them clear. See you in chapter 26. Three more chapters to go and we'll finish the, the whole book. Thank you for listening and see you in chapter 26.